Chris Hensley is a registered representative of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member of FINRA, SIPC, investment advisor representative of Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Cambridge and Houston First Financial Group are not affiliated. The Houston Midtown Chapter of the Society for Financial Awareness presents Money Matters with your host, Christopher Hensley. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Money Matters on KPFT Houston. I'm Chris Hensley. The time is now 11 a.m. We've got a great show lined up for you today. If you have been listening, you know that we are right here, right in front of Houston Money Week. I've been talking about this not even since January, but even prior to that. I want to say November uh, of last year when, and it's like a, we've been building up and we've been building up and then here we are right before April Financial Literacy Month still March but almost April <laughs> almost there uh, and we are lucky enough to have uh, Houston Money Week partner Jackie Aguilera she is the president and CEO of Eastside University she is live in the studio with us today and she will be joining us very very shortly to update us on what's going on with Eastside University as well as what's going on with her involvement with Houston Money Week. So please stay tuned. Uh, keep listening. If you are a longtime listener, you know we always reserve just the first few minutes of the show to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the Houston and the Gulf Coast area when it comes to financial literacy. Well, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to, since, since the bulk of what we're going to be talking about is uh, several events that we have coming up for Houston Money Week, uh, I'm going to go ahead and not do the calendar because we'll talk about some of these, these topics as well. So let me just go ahead and turn on your mic. <laughs> Jackie, welcome to the show once again. Hi, right, thanks, Chris. It's great to be back. So you might be the guest that's been in here the most, because I usually don't have repeat guests, but right. since you have been working with Houston Money Week in some shape or form uh, for many, many years. In since fact, the beginning. Since you are one of the very beginning people that, that was actually there right at the beginning with Houston Money Week, uh, you've, you've been in multiple times to kind of tell us as this has rolled out. Um, now, Jackie, for listeners, you are the president the CEO of Eastside University, Third Ward, Houston. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself outside of that? Sure. So, um, again, you know, looking at Houston as, you know, home base uh, and really looking at how the city has grown with economic development with opportunities and and challenges as well uh, we know that we're real we are still going through a rebuilding phase and so again uh, the interest that I've had uh, with financial education with adult education has really uh, taken me in different directions so uh, with Eastside University I'm back really into the adult education the uh, transitions and and the challenges that we have to really have an empowered and and an informed workforce and of course that ties in directly with Houston Money Week because again we're empowering families and individuals to be successful and make good financial choices. So what I love about that is that a lot of times with Houston Money Week, we'll tie this into Houston Money Week as well, but, <laughs> but with the Houston Money Week, we'll go out and do these seminars, these workshops, uh, these financial education events, and they're all over Houston and they're free and they're open to the public, but often people aren't able to make it out and a lot of times they are they're working right exactly. every every day they're, they're going to work there uh, you guys are involved in financial education in the workplace can you yes. tell us a little bit about that so we do a lot of partnerships uh, one of the key uh, challenges that adult education is involved with right now is the transition to successful and living wage employment. So working with employers, what we're doing is making sure that not only are their employees 
trained for English skills or job skills or transition skills, but then once they get to the point of better wages or improved job opportunities, what they do with those funds is another question. A lot of times we just concentrate on getting a better job or a better opportunity. And then individuals who have not had a good financial uh, decision-making experience or have had people in their in their um, families that have helped them out or just don't have the knowledge, perhaps they've never worked. And so this is the first time that they're transitioning. And, you know, again, so excited, so happy to be employed and being able to take care of your family. But the decision making, you know, uh, again, we're still faced with the challenge that not only should we get people a job, but then how do we help them stay out of the paycheck to paycheck loop and even sometimes not even paycheck to paycheck because you're still overspending, not making good choices, and you're still having to go to those non-traditional options to make up even though you're making more money. So I love it because the the financial education piece is huge, right? For for uh, once you get on track and you're employed and you're doing this, but you guys also do the the first part that you mentioned, the, the uh, learning English and the job skills and that sort of stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that front end part? Sure. So as an adult education school, Eastside University offers. Uh, tuition subsidized classes and we house them within our school which is uh, located right in the third ward off Holman and Scott Street but then we've also made relationships with partners again a lot of employees are working they're not able child care transportation challenges so we will bring ESL classes, English classes to the workplace. Uh, we will bring computer classes if uh, that is what's needed. We have employees who are working. They need their high school equivalency or what most people are familiar with, the, the GED exam. And again, we do those preparation. We're willing to do it in-house on Holman Street and we're willing to go to the employer. Uh, I've met with um, the several employers from different industries and they are really looking at incorporating and improving their teams by providing in-house classes. And so we are really developing those partnerships. One of the things that this has afforded me to do is to do some uh, educational and employer consulting in addition to what I do at the school. And one of the uh, current partners that I'm working with is the Houston Food Bank. They have their Food for Change program, which is an exciting initiative because not only are they giving away food. And I think that's uh, something that, again, people think about the food bank. Oh, they just hand food out. And really, they uh, empower organizations and sites to then house those programs. But more importantly, they offer education. And so when you go in and you're seeking help, they want to also empower and give resources and knowledge. So with the Houston Food Bank, currently I'm working with them. Uh, that partnership came uh, coincidentally from Red and Black. Uh, uh, the authors of what I learned about life when yes. my husband was fired. Speaking yes. of employment challenges, Houston Money Week partner, Houston Money Week partner, exactly for years. And um, this partnership, we're utilizing this whole concept of, oh my gosh, did we plan? What happens to our lives if if something, you know, a crisis, financial crisis happens, like losing a job, and then we don't know what to do? And so uh, we're actually working on uh, a training program with. Uh, their staff so that they can then go out and uh, be able to empower the clients that are coming in to help them prepare for a crisis, to help them have the tools they need to get out of a crisis. And so this has been very exciting. Um, it is something that, uh, again, a, a crisis forces you to grow up. And uh, this is something that uh, uh, with working with Red and Black, that's one of the things they really push is, you know, the planning and what do you do? And again, most of us, you know, we have life experience. We're not claiming ourselves as experts, but we do have the resources and the knowledge to pass that expertise on. And that's the partnership with Houston Money Week. We're able to bring that connection. Houston Money Week is all about that month long of accessing a lot of resources that you might not otherwise think about or maybe even realize you can access. Um, maybe you're thinking, oh, this is going to cost too much. I'm already having money problems.
problems and you're telling me to pay for something and Houston Money Week is saying no here it is we're offering up to you for free come in get these uh, skills that you need make these connections and yes there's a process that you can access that can help you later um, again it's about getting an, a new and improved relationship uh, with finance. And if you've never had one, then hello, meet your money. <laughs> you know, it's almost like money matchmaking. <laughs> well, so now so now we're talking about Houston Money Week. So we, yeah. we went from, and we talked about a lot of really good things earlier there, the b- partnership with Houston Food Bank. I yeah. love Houston Food Bank. I mean, Absolutely. and I didn't even realize they were doing this. This yeah. is a separate thing that, uh, very, very good. Uh, but le- yeah, let's, let's pivot for a moment and talk about Houston Money Week. For listeners, who aren't familiar, if they listen to the show, they are, but, uh, <laughs> That's who, it. who aren't familiar with Houston Money Week, tell us a little bit just about what Houston Money Week is in general. Sure, absolutely. So Houston Money Week is an initiative. It's an, an education initiative about empowering families for their financial sound decision making. Um, we're looking at, of course, the impact. We empower individuals. We empower families. So we are empowering our community, which empowers our city. It is a what turned out to be started a, a week long of events now an entire month uh, in correlation with National uh, Financial Education Month in April. And down to the uh, uh, the basics, it's classics, classes, workshops, information, interactive sessions uh, that are taking place all over the city. Um, when we devised a map, we looked at four different quadrants that really is a representative of the entire city of Houston. And we have uh, financial institutions, financial educators, we have nonprofits all coming together to offer classes on budgeting, saving. Uh, first-time home buying, uh, credit repair, basically anything and everything that you would like to know or didn't even know you needed to know about finances. And again, this is all offered uh, for free for your time and, and your investment of for yourself. So, so being on the leadership team myself, <laughs> as well as you, uh, that we this is a huge thing. When we go out now, when we have our meetings out at the United Way, I mean, we fill up one of the rooms there. It's a huge facility. Uh, there are so many different partners. You mentioned the nonprofits, the banks, the doing their community reinvestment work, uh, local city government. We have universities. We have middle schools. We, I mean, we have uh, elementary. It, it all, it's all over. All over. So now this thing is huge now, and we're up over our ten year anniversary now. Yes. But you were there from the start. Tell us a little bit about the experience of Houston Money Week, kind of getting off the ground. Sure. So you know, you you like most people, you get a group that has a like mind and goes, hey, we have an idea. What about this? Now, we're doing this in 12 different ways, small, good impact, low impact. How can we form a collaborative? And so everyone knew someone and made calls. Hey, I think you'd be a great partner. We're thinking about doing this. So here's the seed, the evolution. Uh, It grew from a very grassroots, hey, what if instead of doing this in in 12 different places, we did it as one? What if we form a group? Uh, It came out of other Houston Money Week that uh, are occurring in other cities. I mean, Chicago, Cause, cause you've got some big national. ones. It's a national, yeah, absolutely. And so money weeks are not uh, a novel idea. It's nothing new, but it was new to Houston at the time. And here it is, Houston as a major city had not had a collaboration to form a uh, outreach uh, organization, if you will. And so this became this initiative. Uh, It started out with, let's fill a week. Let's try to do a week of events. And of course, we had a hurricane, which threw (laughs) threw everything off in in true Houston style. Uh, But you know, we never do anything just, you know, in regular style. So as usual, we uh, got ourselves back together and still conducted a few events. And from those initial events and those initial partnerships, we started growing our relationship. Uh, The Federal Reserve was a huge part of helping to develop and to take that under their wing and to really help us grow. Um, We went from a handful of events to now, you know, we're looking at hundreds hundreds of events. (laughs) Um, We're impacting five-digit numbers now of of Houstonians uh, and people coming in from all over the 
cover the greater Houston area. And, you know, you mentioned the 10 year anniversary and, and looking at everything that we've accomplished uh, from just a, a workshop and a class here and there to uh, children's festival, art car parades. Um, we're just uh, really a, a solid group that has really grown and, and again, looking at empowering and, and giving those resources. Um, Houston Money Week is, is more like a Houston Money Movement now. Right. I'm very much a numbers guy, so one of the things that we do on an annual basis is put out this Houston Money Week uh, annual report. And so right. when we say, you know, how many touches did you have in the community, it's not a guess number. Uh, we, we actually track that at these exactly. events. So uh, when we say that it's grown, it's not just, a, hey, we think it's grown. We can right. see the That's thousands it. of people uh, that are attending these these events now. Yeah, you know, Chris, I remember how exciting it was whenever we were like, okay, we've got about a hundred and something people. And then it was like, oh, wow, okay, now it's about five. And then we turned around, it's like, 12,000, 13,000, 15,000. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. But I mean, this is how amazing this organization has been and it's really about the partners it's the people we have really formulated a team growing new partners almost every meeting now and uh, it really has been a real uh, testament to what we do when we collaborate we work together and we have a primary mission and uh, we you know are inclusive that everyone is able to uh, get out and make a difference so we talked a little bit about how it was at the beginning, a uh, handful of events. Uh, let's fast forward now, we're 11 years or so we right, go. In, into the future, and um, we've got lots of lots of events. Let's talk about some of the, so maybe some of your favorite events that are rolling out this year. Sure. So, well, we already did the Houston Hispanic Forum. That one is uh, kind of always our, our uh, debut event for for the season, if you will. Um, just an amazing opportunity to engage the community. And, and you talk about thousands of parents and and youth, you know, and it's all about their future. And of course, future is going to be money. And uh, to be able to be present there, and, and it was a fantastic event. And thank you for being one of the presenters, by the way. You are welcome. I can tell you one of the coolest things to me uh, at presenting was when a parent came up and said, I brought my kid and I went to this 10 years ago and it had a big impact on my life oh, that's and I amazing. wanted to bring my child to this event so that that kind of stuck out for me on that I was like oh this is okay this is why we're doing this <laughs> exactly those reminders get yes. us that's true yes. well you know uh, then of course we have the children's festival that's coming up and that's uh, March 30th and 31st it takes place to, right in the heart of of Houston down at City Hall and again an opportunity to engage families uh, to give out information and resources about you know, what are those next steps? How do I take care of my family? Um, and, and so, again, we're, you know, outreaching. We're bringing it to the people. A lot of times we go, okay, we're going to set up an event and we'll sit back. And, you know, if, if we build it, they will come. Right, uh, right. But, you know, the, the real big thing, of course, is getting into the community and taking the word out. And Children's Festival is such a fantastic it's opportunity a to event. do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and this year, what I'm really excited about is, is through the support of the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation, we're actually able to expand from not just financial literacy, but this is actually a true holistic literacy event. Uh, we are going to be uh, giving away books that were generously donated uh, by the Barbara Bush uh, Foundation for us to help families establish home libraries. And so now we have expanded ourselves from uh, this financial to a true financial literacy. I've uh, uh, kind of coined this as a, a read, learn, earn event. Uh, you must have the ability to read in order to be successful in life. And that way you can learn what you need in order to accomplish and get a living wage job so you can earn what you need to take care of your family. So that's a read learn earn event and uh, we are excited we're planning on dressing up like superheroes nice. and because uh, we're gonna save the world nice. at the children's festival <laughs>
Nice. So and now I know at a lot of these events we have kind of promotional giveaway type stuff that we've yeah. got, you know, branded for Houston Money Week and that sort of stuff, and we give it away. But on this particular event, there's something else that we're giving away as well. What what are what else is? So we've got, of course, we're going to give out books. We're going to give out Houston Money Week, uh, the the pens, the shirts. You know, we've got all the fun things and bookmarks that go with those books. Um, and again, you how, know, how, how many books? Oh my goodness. Well. Thanks to Barbara Bush Foundation, uh, we have over 300 books that we're able to to give out. And again, you know, the empowerment structure, you know, is holistic. We we can't just focus on one piece because it's all flowing together. And of course... I have no way of understanding the information I'm receiving if I'm not able to read. And I can't help my children if I don't understand and I don't have the concepts. So this is like our holistic approach. And that's why Children's Festival is so uh, important and such a great outreach opportunity because we're bringing all those factors together. I don't know how many uh, financial education events that I've spoke with people, retirees, where they're like, Boy, I wish I knew this when I was younger. Exactly. You know, I wish you got me when I was younger. And exactly. uh, here we are. <laughs> starting that that That's correlation it. between literacy and fi- and getting on track with your finances, learn or read, learn, earn. You I got like, it. I love that. I love that. So that's just two events. What other events are, are we have in here? Sure. So, you know, we've got our uh, 100 teens event that uh takes place and of course we've got a lot of the uh, high school students that are coming over to the Federal Reserve Bank and and we've got our veterans event. You know, again, we have our special populations to reach out to. And our veterans, uh, God bless them, they have uh, given their all to uh, to help protect this country and to serve the country. And, you know, here it is. We are, uh, you know, going to reach out and, and help and give resources, uh, especially for vets, so that, uh, you know, where wherever you're at, whatever you need, we're going to try and, and provide that information there. And help families again we're back to the families and so that's it so we've got a hundred teens and the <laughs> there we I, go I, when we say all this it's a massive scale uh what about the art car parade oh the art car parade how <laughs> the art car parade on april 13th so here it is we we began with uh trying to get more innovative and um alicia proctor who's now with the fort bend uh literacy council we uh were uh working together with houston center for literacy that's when i was the director of adult ed at the time and we were discussing how can we make this fresh what else can we do and it was art card parade season we went you know what if we got a proposal together and I said look I'll take it to the leadership team let's let's do this leadership team God bless you thank you Chris (laughs) thank you all of the leadership team went wow yeah this is cool so you know again a presence in the community Uh, thanks to Ricky Jimenez over there at uh, uh, you know at um, uh, Allegiance Bank you know he really hit a home run for us. Uh, we have that lovely Volkswagen bug that uh, it looks like a rolling piggy bank. Through an act of love <laughs> is, is driving. You know, like <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, and so, you know, again, finances, personal finances, a lot of times you get two reactions, boring or I'm going to run away and hide. And again, if you're going to learn, you have to have fun with it. That art car parade is the opportunity that we take. Hey, personal finance can be fun. Uh, here it is. You know, it, it's a good uh, opportunity to wake people up. Savings. you got a rolling piggy bank. I mean, just the basics ideas. Again, getting into the families, getting to the children, making those impressions. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity. It is a long walk, but it's worth every step like of the way. Two miles. Two miles. <laughs> Well, what I love about it is, uh, you know, for last year was our first year kind of dipping our feet in the water. Yes. Uh, but now we have an asset, something that we've purchased for the that's art right. car parade that's reusable. Um, in fact, at the other events, we can get the art car to go out to the other events. I think that's so neat. <laughs> we now have an educational outreach tool. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, and, and we might have to get it there on a trailer, but it will get there. It will get there. It makes an impression. And again, you know, you walk away with this idea of, oh, yeah, piggy banks, saving, putting money away. Uh, you know, and again, you know, you think about it uh, in, in other imagery, you know, you save and you can roll away to your next destination. So I love that. So those are kind of the, the 
big events that stick out on my mind. Yeah. I mean, there's there's more. For there sure. are there literally uh, so many events, and and again, the website. Right. You go right. to the Houston Money website. We have the calendar up. Pick a day, and on any given day, uh, there are several events even within those days. So, uh, you know, you can cover uh, home buying, you can cover savings, credit repair, um, and there's even a matchmaking event that's going on for small business and people that are looking for supporters of those businesses. Uh, so, there's a lot there. There's so many different avenues to pursue. So we have kind of the, whatever you say, signature or spotlight events that we've been trying to do every year. Or maybe we right. can say, okay, this is a big one. We're going to do this every year. Right. But separate from that, we have these these quadrant events. And that's kind of neat because of the way that it's organized. Uh, for listeners, can you tell them a little bit about how these quadrant wor- quadrants work? Sure. So we looked at, you know, we would try and do one big event. And then we were losing participation, especially in some areas areas that uh, are financial deserts. They're, they're deserts in many ways. Most of the time they're literacy, retail, food, Even and food, financial. No that's stores. that's it. I mean, uh, so yeah. And, and so in order to, you know, provide more holistically, uh, we looked at, uh, as a leadership team, how do we divide and conquer, basically. Right. So we divided Houston into four quadrants. And the partners who had the most service areas in each quadrant then became subgroups and those guys decided okay what is a big event that could match a need in our community in our our part of Houston that we can provide and have it be an easy access for those living in the area because remember Chris a lot of times when we're talking about low to moderate income individuals if we're talking about people who have uh, you know low wage employment or no employment most of the time transportation is an issue and uh, we can have some great events and we can have some wonderful resources but if I'm living in Aldine and the great resource is all the way in in uh, south of Houston, um, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, so just, and so for our listeners outside of Houston <laughs> and the Gulf Coast region, sometimes it could take an hour or two hours to get from one side to the other side of the city. So that is a major, major. Absolutely. Concern. And you know, uh, in, in some of our, our more challenged areas too, even access to transportation is challenging. So you're having to actually, you know, walk sometimes a mile or two to find a bus stop. So, you know, again, we're getting out to the people. So what did we need to do? Quadrant events. And that became uh, part of the solution. I love that. That's one of my favorite parts is because there wasn't a, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. It was kind of this this, uh, autonomous, I mean, you've got this area. But what are you going to do? Exactly. <laughs> and, and every year it's something that's neat. Um, I think one of them, there's estate planning and, and, I mean, just everything. We're, like, touching everything in right. all these different areas. Well, well, you know, we've really started, you know, focusing on from birth to the grave and beyond, right. really, right. because uh, that's that's something that I love about, uh, you know, when they start, we start talking about retirement planning, when we start talking about life insurance, when we start talking about the uncomfortable thing, uh, that big uh, end of life, uh, and, and what happens, and you know, a lot of times, again, estate planning, what happens, the individual, their life ends, but the impact on their family, uh, on their business, on everything that uh, comes after, even though the individual is gone. And a lot of times, again, we don't plan for it. We don't think about it. And, you know, a lot of times we don't want to think about it. But here it is. It's a fact. And, you know, for a lot of families, you know, the worst thing that can happen sometimes you have a, a relative that passes. There's no transition plan. There are no finances. And here it is. The entire family scrambling, uh, trying to, you know, call Aunt Martha, call Uncle Joe, you know, uh, doing anything and everything to scrape together something to help take care of, you know, funeral arrangements. Right. You've left a headache instead of uh, something good. <laughs> right. A, a headache in addition to the heartache. Right, I mean, and, right. you know, and again, you know, this is something that, you know, uh, we at times are uncomfortable to deal with, but it is a part of life. And I think that's part of the beauty of Houston Money Week. Houston 
Wisdom Money Week has opened doors and opened opportunities for people to look at what perhaps they're uncomfortable with. I might have a, a really lousy credit rating. I've made a whole bunch of mistakes. And so here I am. I'm kind of hiding in the shadows. And, you know, we don't want people to know these things about us. We kind of, you know, again, keep it tucked away. But Houston Money Week's the opportunity to come out of the shadows and, and be safe and, and just uh, be with individuals who are there to help and it's it's all about helping nobody's judging thanks for listening to today's episode of money matters podcast if you enjoyed the show visit us on the web at www.moneymatterspodcast.com drop us a line on speak pipe on the right hand corner uh, it will receive any voicemails, questions, thoughts, concerns that you have about the show. In addition to this, we recently launched a Patreon campaign. Click on the Donate Now tab to hit the tip jar and find out what Patreon's campaign is all about.